Look at the shine in the face. What do we have to do with the shine? We have to darken it. Now, what is the blend mode that darkens? Multiply. So let's do something with that. First of all, what do we need to darken it with? We need to darken it with a skin color. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Pick a color from the skin or you can pick any random color. So from right here, I'm going to pick this color. However, if you want to sample from the skin, you can turn off this layer by clicking on the eye right here. Double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer and pick any bright color from the skin that you want to darken the shine with. Now, make it even brighter because we're going to be using the multiply blend mode anyway. Hit OK once you're satisfied and know that you can modify it at any time. Why? Because this, my friend, is an adjustment layer. Let's turn it on and change the blend mode from normal to multiply. Now that it's darkening everything, we only want it to darken the bright areas or the shine areas. So how do we limit it to that? Blend if. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layer that lies under it. So in this case, the layer that lies under it is the subject layer. And we want to take this away from the dark areas of it so that we only keep it in the bright shine areas. And the way we do that is by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right just like this. Now it's very harsh, so hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and break it all apart to make the transition smoother. Now that is looking fantastic. Hit OK once you're satisfied and there you go. Here's the before, here's the after. And again, as we discussed before, if at any time you want to change the color, which we want to do right now, you can double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer and this time let's make the hue a little more yellowish. Now that is looking nicer. You can make it less or more saturated, that is up to you, hit OK. Double click on the right hand side of the adjustment layer and you can adjust it even further if you think it was too extreme. I think this is fine. Now there's the problem with this technique. The problem is it's darkening not just the shine but every other area, even the eyes, anything that is bright. So here's the before, as you can see, it's even darkening the eyes. Here's the after. The skin is looking fantastic but even the teeth and the lips the highlights right there are being darkened. So how do we control that? Select the mask, you already guessed it, right? Press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask and then you can take the brush, white as the foreground color, take a soft round brush from right here and just paint on the areas where you want it. Make the brush a little larger and I'm gonna paint right over here. Make sure the opacity and the flow are at 100 or the desired value of your choice and I'm gonna paint only in these areas where we want it. There you go. Maybe we want to adjust the color again. I think that works for me. Now here's the last step. The opacity is just too much. It is just making it too dark. Here's the before, here's the after. We don't want it that much. Remember, opacity is your best friend. So let's decrease the opacity and we're going to keep it somewhere about 62. That is nice. You might come across scenarios where you do need a different color for a different area. Before we get into it, you might say, Unmesh, what about doing it in one click? We're going to get to it later. Wait for it. Let's say in this example, we have fixed the shine on the face. Here's the before, here's the after. Keep in mind, I've kept the opacity at 100 just to make a point. But if we use the same color in the body, have a look at it. Let's select the mask, take the brush with white. If we paint right here, maybe you don't want it to be that yellowish. Maybe you want a different color. So let's go back. Simply make a copy of this shine kill layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command A. If the background color is black and you want to fill it with the background color, which is black, press Ctrl backspace. If the foreground color is black or you want to fill it with the foreground color, press Alt backspace. Now paint with white right here. We want it to be a little more reddish. So double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer and make it more reddish and more or less saturated. That's up to you. I'm going to leave it at that. Hit OK and then you can control the opacity. The point is different areas may need different colors and different opacities. Now what about doing it in one click? If you're a professional and you don't really want to spend all the time to do all of that, you can easily do it with one click using AI. Here's how. So I have adjusted the opacities to 78 and 76 respectively and we're going to save it as a snapshot to compare. So let's open up our history panel. If you cannot see it, go to window and make sure you open history right here. Make sure it is checked and simply click on, let me open that again snapshot right here. It will freeze that moment in time as a snapshot. So let's go ahead and start afresh and for it I'm going to be recommending a plugin that I have been recommending for eons right now. So let's delete all of it. Make a copy of the subject layer. How do we do that? By pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now simply go to filter, 
retouch for me and then choose this new one, which is retouch for me mattify. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's going to analyze right here and all of the shine is gone. Now you can control the blend how much you want to remove the shine. And on top of that, you can always control the opacity. Just to show you the stark difference, we're going to keep it at 100 for now. Make sure you check Make Mask right here. Hit Apply. There you go. It's gone. It's on its separate layer. Here's the before. Here's the after. You don't have to worry about different colors. You don't have to worry about masking or opacities. Everything is perfectly done. And it looks natural. So here's the before. Here's the after. Here's the before. Here's the after. Now you can try it for yourself for free. I'll leave a link to the trial version in the description. Simply try it with your own images. And there's a reason I recommend this, not just because of this one plugin. First of all, let's compare it. Let's go to history and save this as a snapshot by clicking on this button. So this is Retouch For Me. And this one is the manual version. Here's Retouch For Me. Here's the manual version. Now we can bring the manual version closer to Retouch For Me by modifying the colors. Maybe make it a little more warmer, maybe increase the opacity just like that and make another snapshot right here. Here's the retouch for me. But still, retouch for me looks way more natural. I have to admit that. So here's manual. Here's retouch for me. As you can see, it looks natural. Here's this and here's this. Now it is absolutely not that you cannot do what retouch for me does manually. You can. I just showed you. If you're a beginner, I recommend that you stay away from plugins and all of that. Practice, do it manually perfect that. However, if you are a professional, there are three reasons why I would recommend going this workflow instead of doing it manually. Number one, if I were to do the same level of masking as Retouch For Me, have a look right here. Here is what Retouch For Me has created with slightly different colors, advanced masking all over the place. If I were to do that manually, it would take a ton of time. Here's what we did manually. We would have to go in right here. Let me fill it with black again. We would have to take the brush, even though we have the blend if protection, we would have to decrease the flow to about 10% and slowly and gradually paint over these areas and paint with different intensities in different areas to make it perfect. Number two, we discussed before that different areas may need different colors and opacities. Here's what Retouch For Me did. Now, let me create a white background to show you exactly what it did or even a black one. Have a look at the advancedness of this right here. There are different colors all over the place. There are different opacity levels all over the place, different intensities. This is on a completely different level. And if you were to do it manually, which can absolutely be done, it is just that it's going to take a ton of time. And here's where being a professional comes into place. You want to save time. You want to pump out more content. You want to serve your clients in time. You want to save time so that you can create more work and do more in your career and make more money. And this is an investment. These are expensive. The third reason why I would recommend this is because it becomes a part of your workflow. So Retouch For Me is not just about one plugin, that is the mattifier. It's about healing, it's about dodging and burning. And I just made a video a few months ago where just with one click, you can do your entire retouching process automatically using these plugins. So it will run each plugins one by one according to your settings. And I've created a free action that you can download in the same video. So in this case, I can just open up my actions, open up PixImperfect Auto Retouch Actions, and there's this basic plus skin mattifier that we just did. All you gotta do is to just play it. Now, as you can see, all of this has been done automatically. So here's the before, here's the after, the entire retouching routine, before, after. As you can see, first of all, automatically it removed the blemishes, automatically it did dodging and burning, it added depth, to the face and then it cleaned up the eyes as you can see right here before after and then it increased contrast in the eyes and it removed the shine before after this is very subtle if you want more of it you can simply just increase the opacity that's all up to you i'm gonna keep it at about 60. sorry for somebody hammering in the background my neighbors just love construction so that's how to naturally remove shine from the face manually and i recommend that if you're a beginner please practice all the manual methods and if you're a professional you can use something like the retouch for me mattifier it really would save your time not just this plugin but the entire suite 
to have just one click and do your entire retouching routine. I'm gonna leave a link to the discount or the discount information right here or in the description if they are available. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?